Call to your mind a typical classroom. What does it look like? Are there rows of desks all facing the same direction? Is there a teacher in the front with a large writing surface like a whiteboard? When we talk about teaching, oftentimes the focus is on what students need to learn and how they learn it. But another important component that can support positive learning outcomes is where students learn. How are educators designing physical learning environments for students today? Fresh out of college teaching, I had no idea what my classroom was going to morph into. I had this idea of the posters have to be only academic. Don't tell too much about yourself to your students. You're there to be their teacher, not their friend. This is Jacqueline Mueller, sixth grade math teacher in Sun Prairie, Wisconsin. She may have one of the most unique math classrooms around. I have like a, a family room sitting area in my classroom. So couches and comfy chairs. I have tables because some kids still like to sit at tables. I have lamps all over my classroom. I took some legs off of my tables and I put them on the floor and I talked my principal into getting me some bean bags. If that sounds really comfortable, it isn't an accident. Early in her teaching, Jacqueline recognized something we're all familiar with. For some students, math is scary. Math is uncomfortable. There's a lot of science and research behind students with anxiety around math. And I, I never ask the question, how many of you feel like you're really good at math? I ask the question, how many of you are afraid of math? And a lot of hands go up. And that's when I say, well, I promise you at the end of the school year, you might not like math. I'm not going to promise that you like it because I don't even like it some days. But I'm going to promise you that you're not going to be afraid of it. If I can make my classroom comfortable first so they aren't feeling uncomfortable physically, then maybe I can sneak some math in there. Overcoming that fear of the subject matter is only one part of Jacqueline's approach. I believe every student is a mathematician when they walk into my classroom. But as the world changes, I also had to bring in social emotional learning. And what do I do when that student who has always gotten it has a complete meltdown in math? Like, those are really huge feelings for a sixth grader. So then I started learning about social emotional learning um, and trauma informed teaching. Uh, so students that walk in not only feel physically comfortable, but mentally and emotionally safe. And that emotional safety can be something different for every student, which encouraged Jacqueline to think about inclusivity and addressing basic needs. I put up a pride flag and I put up a Black Lives Matter flag and I put up my Seneca Cayuga Iroquois Nation flag. Mondays were Mindfulness Mondays and we just started with breathing. And then I realized students coming back from lunch needed it. There are so many students that walk into this building and you don't have any idea what's going on and where they come from. I want their emotional and mental health to come first before academics. It's sixth grade math. If we get, if we miss one lesson, it is not the end of the world. But they're feeling safe when really big things are going on in the world. That's more important. Usually I start with how I'm feeling. I bring my feelings into it uh, just because I have years of coping and I have like those skills already built. So I tell them my really big emotions and I say, it's okay to be angry at what's going on. It's okay to be mad. Um, and then I, we talk about how we cope with that and how do we deal with that. This openness and emotional exchange with their students has created a level of trust between them. And Jacqueline has seen that trust extended to the academics as well. Because again, they, they have so much choice in the classroom and I've, I've invested in that. And when I say, I need you to be quiet and listen, okay, I will. Like they, they do it because I've given them so many choices elsewhere. I can walk out of my classroom to deal with a student or a meltdown or whatever, and my classroom continues to run without me. Nobody stops doing what they're supposed to be doing. Using her classroom space as the foundation for building trusting and emotional relationships, Jacqueline's personal teaching mantra is distilled to a short, simple phrase. First love, then teach. My idea behind first love, then teach is I need to create a classroom where they can walk into a literal physical space and I want them to feel the weight of the world leave their shoulders, where they can be a sixth grade kid. 
because so many of them don't get to be kids anymore. They don't get to just live carefree anymore. Um, and even the ones that are coming from supportive homes, they're dealing with social media and um, mean kids at school. And it just, I needed to make my classroom a place where they literally felt the weight of the world leave their shoulders. What are some of the ways you've changed your learning spaces? 